Hello everybody. Welcome to another video of Nutrix the Synth Guy. And today, while well, I'm more of a <laughs> of Nutrix the Drum Machine Guy. You know, if you follow my YouTube channel, that I, I am an owner of the TR8S. Sorry, I'm making noises here. I'm a an owner of the TR8S from Roland. And it's probably for my personal experience. I'm going to show you this. TR8S. For my personal experience, probably one of the most powerful drum machine um, that I ever played with. Um, and it is one of my favorite. The reason is it does everything I expect of the traditional or the classic 808, 909, 606, 707 sounds and and more and virtual versions of them. And, and it sounds really nice. There's a real cool tactile interface. It's really a fun place to be when you're, you know, playing with drums. There's a fan synthesis in it. There's sample playback. There's a bunch of cool sample that came with it. And then you can also load your own sample. It's not a sampler per se, but you can put your own sample in it and play with it. So it's a performance tool. That's why you've got all these faders and knobs and motion record in real time. You can have, you know, some of the extra features mean you have to go into a little screen here and it's, I mean, it works. You can go into this, the screen, you can turn the values and enter and write. And so, but it's not like having a screen with arrows or a bigger screen with LCD. So they released this week, an editor. Now, to, to be able to run the editor, well, it's Mac and PC, uh, you need to have the TR8S or the TR6S, and they need to have the latest firmware update. Mine was at 2.0, and it needed to be updated to 2.03 to update the firmware of your TR8S or TR6S. I don't know if this one has an update, but I guess it probably has. You have to go on the Roland website, you have to download it, and you have to follow the instruction. Follow the instruction. Follow the instruction. Just read it once, and then do what it says. It will work. If you don't follow it, a lot of problem goes your way. But when that is done, you just uh, also download the free, free, free. Did I hear free? I heard free. Free editor for the Roland TR8S and TR6S. When it's open, you have to connect directly the USB connector of the TR8S to your computer. Well, you can go through a hub if you want, but I used to connect it through my MX1. If I want to use the editor, I can't. It has to go through directly the hub or directly to the Mac or the PC, whatever. So now you see the information of the TR8S uh, and then you just click editor and you get that cool little screen. Basically, you've got a couple of screens it does everything that a TR8S does. Um, and there's only one thing that I, I saw that you can't do is import your samples. It, it's still going to go through the card you put in and then you import, which is fine. I mean, it, it's okay with that. So you've got the first screen where you've got the full, they call the overall. You've got the overall information. You get the faders. If you move them on the machine, you see it on screen also change in real time. If you change the information here, well, this one is custom. It's not assigned to anything. If you say this one, this. One thing that is cool is you can easily just look at this and say, okay, I can change the sound. You can just load another one right away. Click, and then you close it. Done deal. You just load it and you drum sound into my, uh, sorry, into my kick, my kick sound, you know. And easily you can just like go in and load and in real time, you can actually browse them. And you can still use the other values in the real time to so hear the subtlety of that sound I can use. Okay, I'd like to have this one. Or, or this one. So whatever, you can. And then you get the PCM, all the samples are there. Let's say I'm going to go back here or just, just have one. Close this. You can actually go right away and click. If you want to move between them, you can actually click here or just here. No, I have to close this. You can filter. I just want to see the, you filter out what you don't want to see. I just want to see the FM or I just want to see the ACB, the 
advanced circuit behavior. I just want to see the sample or the stuff that I have personally imported into it, which I didn't do any. So nothing is imported from my own stuff. So you close it, you have, you know, the level. Um, the level here is for the accent. It's for that little section here. Accent, level, reverb level. If you bring it up, you're going to have some reverb, depending on who's playing what. So you have some reverb here. You've got the time of the brief, you've got the delay, level, time, feedback. I'm just going to stop that for now. Uh, of course, you get all the sound you can load in, click on them, get tune decay. And one thing that is pretty cool is you can easily and quickly just say, oh, I'm going to assign it to pan, or no, I'm going to assign it to uh, instrument effect, I'm going to assign it to uh, delay send, I'm going to assign it to, uh, oh, in this case, course tune. And then this one is going to be assigned to FM course. You know? And then right away, you can use them to do what you need. It's really, really efficient, you know, fast to, to assign this. You can also go in and uh, at the top, you've got the master effect on, off, and the controller. So basically what you have on screen here happening, the auto fill and the cycle. So basically what you have on screen on the panel, you have it here. You have the shuffle right here and you get the tempo. At the bottom, you've got motion control, and you can easily switch between the different instrument and the type of control you want to have. You want a motion control of velocity. Well, I can click here and just can just enter this, and right away we're at the bass drum. Low velocity, okay. Tuning now. Let's try it for high hat. It's gonna be easier to hear. Go here. Let's go high hat. Close I add. So now velocity is playing. Tuning. Am I using the right one? Oh, I have to turn it on. Sorry. I'm, I'm, uh, and I'm doing the classic error of editing pattern number A and listening to pattern E. Put it to A now. Wonderful rhythm that I just created without knowing what I was doing. Let's actually go, go back to the kick and uh, bring that to something more. Kind of a weird, weird something. It works. You've got action here. You can do, you can record decay. Of course, you can record in real time on the machine. You'll see it also here. You got the decay and you get the control. And again, control is what you assign here to be control. So really the same thing you have here. But then you go, okay, in that case, what is it? Well, outside of the fast, quick way to do this here, or the interesting way to enter your notes here, or the motion control. The other options are where you got more information, like instrument. Now you want to go deeper into editing, let's say your bass drum, the instrument itself. You see you're in uh, bass drum here. You can switch between them right away here easily. And what you have is it tells you to type. In this case, it's ACB and it's a bass drum. Again, you can click here and switch and load whatever you want. You remember that you can load snare instead of a kick drum or a hi-hat or uh, voice, scent, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't uh, force you to have kick drums in the BD section, the bass drum section. Um, actually, let's close this. So when it's here, then you've got access over what this type of ACB bass drum has. You've got attack. That's it. That's about it. You get decay, tune, and instrument effects. So this is kind of classic. Every sound has this, and the attack is the only part that is specific to this sound. Let's actually go with something that is FM synthesis now. If I click this and I go outside, now you have morph. Not much more control, but yeah, now it's a FM morph control. Fine. Let's go into PCM now, a sample. Now you've got a lot more controls because it's sample controls. You've got the course tuning of your sample, you get sample rate, you get the spread, bit reduction, you have the attack, the hole for a step hole. Um, you want a hole, time, or step, and depending on what you're selecting, it will affect it. You got a low pass filter, 
uh, with the cutoff point, with the resonance and the filter attack and the filter envelope and the filter decay and how much filter um, is assigned to velocity. So it's basically everything about sampling here that you have into this, which you would usually go into this little window to find. So this is cool because you see it in one glance. You've got everything into one uh, screen here. Second section you have just after that, because now this one would be... I'm going in distortion mode. Let's, let's actually load something else. Oh, yeah, if I want to load another beat, before going and continue this, I can go just here in pattern. Uh, actually, no, this you can enter the pattern. That's... Oh, I stole the punch right away. Let's look at this. <laughs> This is the pattern for seeing everything in one glance. Um, if you're a Xenology fan, if you're using um, um, not just Xenology, but the Roland Cloud online, you can actually get uh, a TR-808, 909, 606, 707, 707 um, beatbox uh, software, of course. And you have that type of screen where you get everything into one screen. You've got the accent, the bass drum, and all the sounds are there. And it's a cool way to see the whole pattern in one glance, uh, seeing the interaction between the different lines. And you have, for each of them, you can just go in and edit them. You know, it's easy to just go type in what you want, give it the velocity. If you change the velocity right away, um, it will change the way you enter the notes also. Um, you have the flam, if you have the alternate sounds. So everything that you have in this is there, the last note. So if you, you can select last one, for the whole thing. You can clear it and start from scratch. We've got um, everything you expect is here, the scatter type, the auto field scatter, and then you can, you know, if you want to affect the two auto uh, fill, you got one and two are here, so it's easy to create new ones for them. Let's go back to instrument because I wanted to go further in this one, but before we go, if you want to play with the drum sounds or the list, um, you can click on the name and you've got the list of the kick, the drum kit and you have also patterns here. So I can load another pattern, another kick, kit, sorry, and then play it. Easily can just change the pattern. I, actually, right now I'm changing the kit. So I like this one, okay, perfect. So the pure fat kick, I'm in BD, bass drum, and it's a PCM. It's a recorded sound, but then modified. So, okay. Just a cool old lo-fi drum sounds. Now you've got um, everything we just talked about, the sampling. Then you've got LFO, you've got uh, the tuning. You can affect the depth of the LFO. You can decide where the LFO is going to be assigned to here. You can change the color of the track itself. I'm going to use, I'm going to say magenta for this one. That changes right away on my panel. You see it here. You can say it's going to be muted if I put the you know, snare. So it's going to be mute when the snare plays. When there's a sound on the SD track, the BD will be muted. Um, there's the output. Again, remember that there's a ton of different outputs at the back here. So you can assign it to these outputs. And there's a group, uh, you wanted to group. What's the group for? Hmm. The fun thing about having a software like that is you discover stuff that you never used in the device. You go, I've never used a group master or off before. So I'm going to have to verify what this is. Eh, that's part of the exploration of the new software or a new editor for an existing box. Really cool. You've got the instrument effect. You've I mean, again, the list, everything that you can have on this is in the screen here. Remember that everything is still running in the TRS. It's not a replacement software. Uh, of course, if you change here, the type of effect, the list will change. You've got a compressor, you're going to have compressor control. If you go compressor and driver, you got to have more control because if you get a compressor and then give the drive, like a drive distortion, a saturator, give the true and different type of post EQ and manipulation and the ring modulator. So all of them, they've got their own list of controls. So that's why you've got that space. Sometimes it's 
almost empty because you only have a couple of controls. Still delay and send for all of them. So same thing for all of these. It's easy and quick. Then you've got the effects. Uh, that's the, the one you have on top, the reverb, the delay, and the master effects. It's here, so you can say which one I want to use here. And the same thing with the delay. So you've got the time, the reverb, uh, and you've got the send. That's the cool thing. You get the send for all of them separately. So, well, I want to have the reverb just on a snare and uh, the hand clap here. That's it. Everything else is no reverb. And I want to have the delay on the, the close eye add and open eye add. That's it. The master out, you get here the type of effect you want to put in. Uh, a lot of people use the low pass. So when you go here, just turn on. So same logic right here. You have it and some of the control is here also. So pretty cool. So I like it because there's many things that it's fun about this is if you load a pattern that you like and a drum kit that you like it's an easy way to just understand what they did so okay this is what i like about it and then get inspired to do your own drum kit or drum pattern because you saw the internal connection because even if it's i mean it's i think it's a cool thing to have if you want to deep dive in creating and sound designing it's an easier interface but then i would not use that on show, on live, tour, or whatever it is. It's more like for a studio work, of course, and then when you go live, you load your stuff and then you do the part you can do on the panel itself, which is why this is a performance. This, I mean, they call it rhythm performer. It's a performer, that's you wanna perform on this. So that's the part that is really cool. And you've got the last two things, the kit and the pattern. We just talked about the pattern. The kit is basically the information. There's a lot of things that's redundant. You see the same thing, but now when you look at this one, you have everything at the same, I mean, a lot of information in the same place. What you had in instrument, like the yellow color, the mute, the group, all that stuff, uh, you have it now in kit. So you've got the mix output for all of them uh, or wherever you want to assign them. You've got the fact that they're, they're mute, muted together. Uh, the controller, what they're controlling, uh, the color. So right away you can say, well, I'm gonna have my drums gonna be blue, my snare is gonna be red, uh, my tum's gonna be, I don't know, uh, purple. That's where I'm gonna want the purple to be for the, you know, whatever you want. You assign it the way you want, and then it becomes, in real time, you have it on the panel changing. So you see the result. And the master group off. And you can, Take one source and send it to another one. So whatever you do on, I don't know, bass drum, you can say, I'm going to send it to low tum and then copy. You get the right and same thing into this one. So it's uh, a quick way to do it. Again, very efficient. Um, you can send it when it's ready. You can write it to memory. You can get something from the editor in real time. The only thing that is lacking i would say from this it's not even the sampling because i expect the sampling to go from either from another dedicated sampling software you can clean up your stuff and send it in, but that's not the case we have plenty of, of software to do that i expect to go with a card for the sampling loading it's fine but i would expect the editor to also be a librarian to be able to say well i fill my entire pattern i want to save that to my hard drive you know save it here it would be easy to do now you still have to save it internally on the the card and play with the card which which is okay but i would expect as as long as you get the editor why not also have a librarian here you're here you know you, everything's there you can just save it on a hard drive and you've got a backup of your your, your, even if you're, you don't have a card with you. That's all. That's all. That's the only thing, uh, thing that's uh, just like a uh, step away for doing it. That's it. Pretty cool. I like it. And again, it's free. So if you've got a TR8 or a TR8S, don't hesitate, you know, and install it and go for it. It's just a cool way to, to again, 
find stuff that you probably maybe it's never used in it because it's hidden in a menu. Now there's the group master. I'm going to have to dive in and understand what this does because I never used it before. And now it's in my face all the time. So my brain goes, I need to know what it is. <laughs> Make more music. Stay safe. See you soon. Cheers, everybody.